So tell me, do you have some ideas now? <laughs> And welcome to The Thread. This is a podcast about my journey to becoming a bona fide knitwear designer, all of the things that I'm knitting on the side, and whatever other nerdy tangent I may or may not feel like skipping down this week. My name is Nicole. I am the nerdy knitwear designer behind Common Thread Fiber, which is how you can find me on Ravelry, PayHip, Instagram, Kofi, and obviously the YouTubes. It's at Common Thread Fiber. And to new viewers, welcome. So glad you found me. And to returning viewers, what up, friends? As returning viewers will know, I've been kind of working on switching up how I do my channel, right? So every other week we talk about what I'm knitting, which often is one of my own designs, as I don't employ sample knitters. And in the weeks in between those episodes, we've started talking about themes or topics that I'm feeling particularly jazzed about. And I've decided to name episodes like this one, The Tangents. So on this week's tangent, we are going to talk about plant-based yarns as well as blends that, in my humble Floridian opinion, are excellent to knit with during the spring and the summer. So if that all sounds good to you, then let's just jump right into it. So one of the things that I hear, I'm not saying that this is a generalizable fact by any stretch of the imagination, but one of the things I hear a lot is that people have trouble, knitters have trouble finding plant-based yarns. So as someone who lives in Florida year round, I'm here to tell you it's hot where I live. It's, it's just hot so, <laughs> already. And on that note, guys, if you see me start to melt, I apologize, but I love you all so much that I'm willing to turn off my AC unit while talking to you. So you don't have to listen to that in the background. So if I turn into soup, well, that's just how it is today. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to tell you it's hot. And when it is hot, knitting with wool is not always choice. I'm not saying that you shouldn't knit with wool when it gets warm. I certainly do. But sometimes you want something that isn't going to stick to you. And that's where plant-based fibers or even blends really start to shine. So being as though I've heard from a lot of people that they have trouble picking yarns, trouble knowing what to look for, or even asking why would I bother? I'm a knitter. I want to knit with wool. I thought that we would go through some yarns that I have quite a few right in front of me that I've knit with before. Some of them I have, I have knit up in projects that I'll share with you. Others are yarns that have been on my list for a long time to try. And I'm willing to recommend them even though I haven't knit with them because people that I know and respect have recommended them to me. And then others are yarns that I have squished in the past and I am fairly confident would be good to knit with. I just don't have them in front of me or I haven't necessarily knit with them yet. So that is how we're going to go through this. While talking about these yarns, I'm also going to put some video up on the screen. So I either might shift this way, or I may see if I can play with the sizing of the video. I don't know. But one way or another, I'm going to put some video up on the screen while I'm talking uh, that it is from my phone from when I went through uh, and kind of was looking at what yarns to use. And this is absolutely I am t a page that I am taking straight out of Taylor Earle's book from Wool Needle Tans. I don't think Taylor Earle is a, is a viewer, uh, but I was watching some of her episodes and when she was talking about yarn, I absolutely love how she, she kind of puts a video side by side with her of what she's looking at. And I just totally am, am ganking <laughs> a, a page out of her book. Which on that note, Taylor, if you are watching, hi. <laughs> anyway, if you do not know who I'm talking about, Taylor Earle is behind the Wool Needles Hands podcast and I'm uh, shocked that you could exist on knitting YouTube and not have come across her yet. So anyway, we're, that's the format that we're going to go through today, if that sounds good to you. Now that we got all that out of the way, I do want to say this is by no means an exhaustive list that we're going to talk about. These are yarns that I have used in the past or that I would like to use and that have been recommended to me by people I trust and respect, like I said earlier. If I don't share your favorite plant-based yarn, for the love of God, put it in the comments. <laughs> and I say for the love of God, put it in the comments because like I said, I live in Satan's like living room, guys. It's hot all the time and I'm always on the hunt for a really good plant-based yarn. Drop it in the comments. And also because I'm working on something that I'm going to start offering as a resource to Kofi supporters and members of the thread, which is a massive spreadsheet that has a whole list of 
yarns that are good to use for summer and spring knits, and they will be organized by cost, by fiber, by brand, and I'll have their website sitting right next to them. So I would love any, any input that y'all have. If I do not talk about your favorite plant yarn here, uh, drop it in the comments and either it will be on that spreadsheet because it's already there or I will make sure to add it. Let's get straight into the yarn, shall we? We're going to go from yarns that I really, really, really want you to know because you may not sit through this whole video. So we're going to talk about them immediately. And then yarns that I've used, so I feel very confident suggesting. And then the yarns that I haven't used yet, but I still feel confident suggesting based, in, based on the people who have recommended it to me. So we're going to start with Indie Dyers. I have two Indie Dyers that I would like to share with you today. And there are definitely more, and there's quite a few on my spreadsheet. But these are two who are front of mind for me. So the first Indie Dyer that I really want to talk about, she is new to me, and I did find her on Etsy. But you'll notice that the, the website I'm going to share while talking is not an Etsy page. She does have her own website, and that's something I want to encourage people to do. If you find dyers on Etsy, go and see if they have their own website before you buy from them on Etsy. Uh, Etsy takes a cut, a relatively large cut, last time I checked. Uh, so if you would like to purchase yarn from dyers that are on Etsy, see if they have their own website first. And if they don't, then buy through Etsy. But if they, if they do, you probably are better off buying from their actual website because you'll know that they're getting more of the money that you're paying them. So here is her website. This is Peacock Yarns. She is a dyer from Sweden. And all I have to say is if moody colorways are your jam, this is your gal, guys. She has the most incredible colorways and colorways that I wouldn't necessarily expect out of out of cotton or tinsel yarns. And she does. She has she has three vegan bases that she has multiple weights in these bases. But she has tinsel, cotton, and linen. And she does also dye wool. So if you see some colorways that you really like, but you're like, eh, I think I'd like it more in wool, go check. She may actually have it. So I just wanted to highlight her particularly for what I would consider relatively moody and dark colorways. Uh, I'm very excited to order from her. I've never tried her yarns. I don't have any of them in front of me, but good Lord, some of these are just incredible to look at. So if you like moody colorways and you're wanting to try some plant-based yarns, I highly, highly, highly suggest checking out Peacock Yarns. The next person, the next indie dyer that I would like to talk to you about is Paige from Zaoli Yarns. So Paige reached out to me after seeing, I think, maybe one of my last two videos, uh, and I immediately went to go check her website. And she does have a lot, she has a lot of plant-based uh, yarns, a lot of plant bases, uh, and quite a few of them, I think actually all of them, come from the United States. So I just wanted to share a little bit with you uh, about who she is according to her website. Uh, it, it is her primary concern to source her materials within the U.S. whenever possible. She likes to support small family businesses across the U.S. And water conservation and energy efficiency is also super important to her. Uh, she puts on her website that she grew up in Southern California uh, in a solar home. And so she knows a great deal about water shortages. And she exhausts all dyes and use eco -friendly, uses eco-friendly cleaning products while she works. And I just absolutely love everything in that statement. I love that she is trying to keep things as local as she can because uh, she is an American dyer. And I love the idea that she has water usage front of mind so that she is doing her best to be as environmentally friendly in her dyeing process. Uh, she has this 100% Virginia fingering weight, which I have in her colorway Dilly Dilly. Uh, and this is it. So this is one of her cotton bases. It's not her only one, um, but this is it. This is the one I, she sent me, which I will tell you, full disclosure, she did send this to me for free, uh, but I would not recommend this to you guys if I didn't think it was excellent. So here it is. So I don't know if you can see the twist in this yarn, but that's one of the big reasons I absolutely love it, other than obviously the colorway is just lovely. Uh, and so the, yeah, this is her colorway Dilly Dilly. And I am so excited to get knitting with this yarn. I've actually had to, you know, put it somewhere else in the house so that I don't just immediately cake it up and start knitting with it. I already have front of my mind an elven, maybe like gray haven kind of a shawl idea, thinking maybe actually go ahead and go for a one skein wonder shawl. I don't know. It's bouncing around in my head and it is very hard for me to resist knitting this up. Uh, but I can already tell I'm going to love working with this. So one of the other things I wanted to touch on with cotton yarn in particular a lot of people like to say that it's rough. The thing to me about a lot of cotton yarn 
is that it's not so much that it's rough or scratchy, it's that it's absorbent. So sometimes when you're knitting with it, yeah, your hands might get a little dry. Cotton is really absorbent. So just be aware of that, when you're, particularly when you're working with unmercerized cotton, which we'll talk a little bit about what the difference is. So for me, this is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. It feels like cotton, and that's what I want. I want something to feel like what I'm actually using. When it doesn't feel like the fiber I'm using, I start to get sketched out. And it's just, it's lovely, and I love the twist. Paige, thank you so much. If you're watching, thank you so much for sending this to me. I'm so excited to, to make something out of this, and I will absolutely be ordering more yarn from you in the future. And like I said, that's Zaoli Yarns. She is an indie dyer, and she has a ton of plant bases, and she also has non-plant bases. So go check her out if you're wanting to, you know, get to know an indie dyer. So anyway, we're going to now move on to yarns that I have either used or that I currently have in my stash and I'm really excited to use. And we are going to start with Quince & Co's Kestrel. So this is the, the colorway I have. This is the colorway Sand. And I don't know, if you get real close, you might be able to see. This is a tape yarn. So this yarn is 100% linen. Uh, it is Belgium grown organic linen that they have essentially chain edited into a tape yarn. So this is a, technically this is a worsted weight and it knits up super quickly. According to them, it's three and a half to four inches, four stitches to an inch. And the flat surface adds a slight texture to what, what might otherwise be a super simple knit. And I can absolutely, uh, I can absolutely say that is true. I have swatched in this and my swatch looked really cool. So, and I'm not one for novelty yarns, guys. Like, I don't usually go for the boucle or go for the, the nubby kind of yarns. It's, it's not really my thing. So, when I first bought this, I was like, oh, man. I, I won't lie to you. I won't pretend. I didn't know it was a tape yarn. And so, when I got it, I was a little concerned. But knitting with it is super, super cool. And they have a really nice color palette. And it also does have really good drape. And like I said, this is 100% linen. So this is the sand colorway, and like I said, it knits up into a really cool fabric, and it knits up very quickly. And if you're wondering, how the hell do I use a tape yarn? You can use it in a very basic pattern. It will give it a really interesting, uh, a really interesting look. It, a basic pattern would let this yarn shine. But there's also a very well-known pattern. I believe it's by Leela Raven, I believe. And I have no idea how to pronounce this, guys. So if I'm saying this wrong, remember, Uncultured American Party of One. I call it the Dis Chain. It might be Deschain. I don't know. But this was a very popular pattern for a reason. It definitely has the drape. I believe it's drop shoulder. So if you're looking for super fitted garments, this one is not for you. But this is an idea of the kind of pattern that you can knit with this yarn. And I just wanted to give you that example because this is a very unique yarn. So like I said, that is Kestrel from Quince & Co. 100% linen, worsted weight, a tape yarn. Super interesting to use. Now we're going to talk about Sandness Garns. Okay, remember, uncultured, uncultured American, right? Tin line? <laughs> Oh my god, please, European friends, help me. Or, you know, at least, like, stay friends with me. I know, it's bad. But this is, this is Sandus Garn's this thing. <laughs> I say tin line, because again, what do you want from me? Uh, but yes, this is their, let's see, this is their thinner version. They do have a thicker version. I believe this is a fingering weight and they may have a worsted. Oh, there's tin line and then there's this line. So the line one is the thicker yarn. And this is a blend. So it has cotton, it has viscose, and it has linen. And you can kind of see when, when you have linen in a yarn, a lot of times you will get this kind of white specks, white streaks. It's usually the linen. And I will say that this yarn is interesting to work with. I absolutely would suggest it if you want a really drapey look. Though I will warn you, if you're going to knit lace with this, it likes to split. So I did actually get this for an elven shawl idea that I had, but it was so splitty that I did not continue with it. And that was my own fault. That's I, I should have looked at this yarn and known this is not the yarn to use for that. Uh, this is the yarn to use for that, not this. It's not very tightly sp like spun together. So it, it kind of undoes itself a little bit easier than any yarn I've ever used, but it is still a really lovely yarn and I'm, I would not hesitate to suggest to people to use this yarn. 
Uh, the drape is bananas. The the sheen on it's really beautiful. I think that's the viscose that you're looking at. Possibly it's the cotton. Uh, but they have a really interesting color palette with it. For my American friends, it might be a little tricky to find people who, to find stockists of Sandus Garden. But you can go to their website and put in where in the United States they are, and they can give you a list of stockists. And I think most yarn stores at this point have online presences and, and can ship. Uh, so you cannot, I don't believe if you're in the United States, I don't think you can order directly from Sandus Garden, but it is not impossible to find a stockist. So, like I said, this is cotton, linen, and viscose. Uh, my colorway, apparently, I looked on the website. I thought it had a name, but I guess it's only a number. I, th I could have sworn it was like aquamarine or something like that. But the colorway, if you go on San Nascarn's website that I have, is 6531. And I absolutely have plans to knit with this, but I know for, for my part this will be a, a seamed garment because of how gloriously drapey this yarn is. So I would absolutely suggest this yarn, but just be aware, if you're gonna knit lace, I salute you. <laughs> so, so far we have gotten two indie dyers. We've gotten Kestrel and Stannis Garn. Now we're gonna talk about Cascade Ultra Pima. Now, I have only ever knit with Ultra Pima fine, but I have little to no doubt that the Ultra Pima, like OG, is totally just as good. So I'm talking about Ultra Pima Fine and I have so much of this yarn, guys. I have knit with this yarn so many times. So here's a peachy color, which would, you know, make me look like I'm blending in with the scenery. <laughs> uh, I can't wear this. I got this for my beautiful Italian mother who has gloriously olive skin, particularly in the summer. I could not pull this off. I would just look like I disappear. I would become a peach green screen. That's what I would become if I wore this. So this was for my mom. But then I also have this, this lovely, this is called Vintage Rose from them. Um, if some of this yarn looks like it's been a bit beat up, guys, I apologize. I had it vacuum sealed. As returning viewers will remember, or people who follow me on Instagram will remember, uh, I had moths. And yes, I know moths won't necessarily go after cotton, but I was taking no chances. <laughs> so I vacuum sealed everything. <laughs> and I, I put everything in the freezer. I was not, I was not messing around. And I thought that I would show you a couple examples or at least one example. Uh, now I'll give you two examples of things that I've knit with this yarn. The first one, I'll put a photo in. I knit the Odyssey shawl by Hohi Locatelli from my mother out of this yarn. Uh, I believe, you know what, I'm not even going to try to tell you what colorways are in there other than vintage rose. I know that one. But you can see the Odyssey Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. This was 100% cotton. But here's an example of it. This, this is going to be a little creased. It's been folded and sitting on my, my table. So the creases are my own bad. Don't, don't pay too much attention to them. But this is the Cedar Pullover by Hohi Locatelli that I knit in Cascade Ultra Pima Fine. This is also from my mother. I have shown it in the past. I need to alter this for my mother. I, I knit it too short. But on this sweater, you can kind of see what I was talking about when I said the stitch definition is bananas. I just think cotton yarn is something else if you want stitch definition. I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that Cascade Ultra Pima is a mercerized cotton. And the reason I think that is because of how shiny it is. And mercerized cotton, you know, again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But so yes, this is Cascade Ultra Pima, um, and that is the Cedar Pullover by Hohi Locatelli, which 98% certain is size inclusive, and the Odyssey Shawl by Hohi Locatelli, which if you ask me, is a great pattern for beginner lace knitters. Like me! I knit it, I had to rip back a lot, <laughs> but that's my own fault. Uh, I think that if you are a beginner lace knitter, it, it is a great uh, pattern to knit. And I would absolutely suggest using this yarn if you're looking for 100% cotton, uh, particularly 100% mercerized cotton. I I think this is smooth. Uh, I would almost call it buttered kittens. It, I it's lovely. I think it's fantastic, and it's not it's not too bad on the wallet either. So, Cascade Ultra Pima. This is the Ultra Pima fine, but they do have I think it's a worsted because this is a DK weight. Sorry, I don't know if I told you guys all of that. Fingering weight, worsted weight fingering weight. I think I may have, but just in case. Okay, so the next yarn that I want to talk with you about is Lana Grossa's Echo Puno. 
I also just want to say Lana Grossa, full stop. <laughs> they have amazing yarn. I believe Lana Grossa is an Italian company. The number of chain net yarns that they have blows my mind. And the Echo Puno, I believe, is the kind of chain net where it's braided. And so the Echo Puno itself is cotton, merino, and alpaca. And I can't shut up about this yarn. I won't shut up about this yarn. Can't shut up, won't shut up about Echo Puno. Uh, it is merino and alpaca, and it is very lightweight. It really feels like you're wearing a cloud when you wear this yarn. I will say that the alpaca does make it warm. So I wore this very happily during the, the fall when I was in Indiana, when Hurricane Ian was, you know, dicking around up the coast of Florida and my husband and I evacuated. We went home to Indiana where my mother lives. And at that point it was, it was a very warm fall. And I, I was so comfortable in this sweater. And that's a Floridian going north where it was like 60 degrees for most of the time. And I was very comfortable in this sweater. Uh, and there are so many colors of this yarn, guys. So many colors. I know I ordered most of them. And I ordered most of them because I was knitting the Birkin by Caitlin Hunter. I don't know if this pattern is size inclusive. I did not check. But it is the example that I have to show you. So this is a heavily modified version of the Birkin sweater. And when I was originally wanting to knit it, I wanted to do the three colors. So I ordered uh, so many colors, guys. I ordered so many colors of this yarn. And then I decided that I wanted to give it a sunflower look, so I just stuck with yellow. And, um, and I'll show it to you now. So I do believe I've shown this on the podcast before. I believe I've worn this on the podcast before. But here it is. Again, if it's a little creased, it's because I froze it. <laughs> and, like, look at that drape. I can't get over it. And it's color work. This is a 75% cotton yarn. And I knit color work out of it. And that is all thanks to the merino and the alpaca. It is fuzzy enough that it clings to itself just enough. And no, you don't get that super Icelandic or Fair Isle looking, you know, kind of really tight together knit beautiful look that you get out of a lot of color work. But when I saw the Birkin pattern, I knew I really, really, really want a very cottagey, rustic looking version of this. I don't want it to look like Fair Isle. And that's exactly what I got. I, I love this sweater, guys. It's quite possibly my most favorite make to date. So this is made out of Lana Grossa's Echo Puno. Seriously, the drape. I can't get over it. I just can't get over it. Uh, top, top three favorite knits to date. And I, I love this yarn. I can't, I can't get over it. So we're going to stick on the Lana Grossa train and we're going to look at Lenarte. So this is another chainette. Uh, I do believe this is also braided together. This is the skein that looks the most beat up. Like, this skein has seen some shit, guys. <laughs> so I apologize. But uh, this is a DK weight. It is a chainette. It is so silky to the touch. Seriously, this is Buttered Kittens. Uh, and it, it does have a, a very nice sheen. And according to Lana Grossa, it's ideal for textured stitches in your warm weather garments. So I'm very excited to knit either lace or cables out of this. So Florida friendly cables, oxymoron if I've ever heard one, but I'm very excited to give it a shot. I will absolutely design something out of this yarn. Uh, so it is cotton and linen, and there is a little bit of rayon in as well. And like I said, I'm definitely planning on, on designing something with this yarn, but I will tell you I haven't knit with it yet. So I'll give you a close-up look. And I'll also, as with other, you know, yarns up until now, we'll we'll go through some of the colorways in, in the video next to me. Yeah, it's it's cotton, bamboo, viscose, and linen. It really does, guys. It feels like butter. And if you look at it, it's flat. I don't know how well you can see it, but it is flat because it's a chainette. And I just I love chainette yarns. Again, your mileage may vary. I'm a Floridian, so maybe it's a Florida thing, but or a hot or a warm climate thing. But I just I absolutely love chain at yarns. I think this color is beautiful, and if I remember correctly, they have a bunch of colors. When I checked on webs, they were sold out of quite a few of them, but I have a feeling it's because of what season it is. So that is Lana Gross's Lenarte, and now we're gonna get into uh, some of the more budget friendly 
or big box kind of yarns. The next one we're going to talk about is Lion Brand. So if you're looking for budget-friendly plant-based yarns, Lion Brand has excellent options. But they have their Kobu, which I believe is cotton and bamboo. They have their actual cotton and bamboo. They have a cotton bamboo linen. They have a 100% Pima cotton, uh, which I have squished their 100% Pima cotton. I found it at Joann's. It's lovely. I do think I like Cascades more, but it's great. It's a great option if you are going to Joann's and you just want to be able to pick up some skeins without having to deal with shipping and waiting around because God knows that's the worst. But the yarn that I want to talk to you about today specifically is their 24-7 cotton. So I have two colorways. Very in your face with this one. I did not end up using this one. I went with a different orange. Uh, so this one has not been used yet. But this I love. I absolutely love this color. So I bought this yarn to make my epic gargantuan real pain in the butt to take out of the project bag <laughs> corner to corner blanket so this is what this yarn can look like knit up so i know i know hot mess express right now but <laughs> like i said guys i don't do small anything maybe it's because i'm short uh my sister always calls me shrimp uh because i am pink and small <laughs> that's the reason she calls me shrimp uh but maybe that's it. So because I'm, I, maybe I have a short lady syndrome. And so I like everything to be oversized. <laughs> I don't know, but it's fantastic. So my husband was really wanting a cotton blanket because cotton has a wonderful weight to it. He actually wants a 100% worsted weight cotton sweater because in his mind, it's like, it's his weighted blanket, but in sweater form. Uh, I told him that we, I, I will do that for him, but I'm gonna have to seam it. <laughs> so it's gonna take me a minute because I haven't seamed any garments before. Otherwise, he's gonna look like the Michelin Man, and I'm just not here for that. Like, my, my knitting cred can't suffer that hit. So, <laughs> but he does. He wants a worsted weight cotton sweater because of the weight. He finds it very comforting. So I started knitting this blanket for for us, it's not just for him, it's for both of us. I wanted it to look like a 1970s California surfing billboard, which I don't even know is a thing, but that was the vibe I was going, and I think I succeeded. So this is the Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton uh, Knit Up. I think this is a chainette. When I look at it, it looks like a chainette. But unlike Lenarte, it's not flat. And they don't say that this is chainette on the website, but it looks like it's been it's been woven together. Um, but it's it's a great it's a great big box option as is like I said they're one hundred percent Pima cotton. Uh, I don't know why, but I don't know that I would knit a garment out of this personally. I can't tell you why. There's just something about it that gives me pause. Uh, it might be because of how much it kind of feels like rope to me. So it doesn't feel rough. It's definitely not like next to skin. It feels fine. Like it's not rough. It's not scratchy. I think I am just concerned about how rope like it is. So maybe if I curl, I don't know. I don't know what it is about this yarn that is making me feel like maybe I won't be knitting a garment out of this. Uh, so if you have knit with it, tell me what you think. Kn knit a garment out of it. I am absolutely loving knitting my, my blanket out of it. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why I wouldn't knit a garment, but for some reason I wouldn't. There are pretty decent color choices uh, in, this, in this yarn. So yeah, tell me, tell me what you think if you've knit with it before. And it is a great big box option. I have found it no problem at Joann's before. So let's see. What else do we want to talk about? Oh, with the 24-7 cotton, it is mercerized cotton. And so let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what mercerized actually is. What it essentially is, kind of like when you have superwash yarn, it's been treated with the superwash yarn treatment, right? Mercerization is a process as well. In which case you are essentially giving it a sodium hydroxide bath that is then neutralized with an acid bath. And what it does is it increases the luster. So if you look at, that is not the only thing that it does, but it's one of the things that it does. Actually, you can really see it more in the garment, I think, than you can on the skein. It makes the yarn very lustrous. Lustrous? Luster? Blah, blah, blah. English is hard, guys. Uh, it also increases the strength and it increases the ability that the yarn has to accept dye. I will say mercerized cotton does tend to feel very silky while non-mercerized cotton tends to feel, uh, I would, I know it's gonna sound stupid. This is the dumbest thing that's gonna come out of my mouth today. 
moisturized cotton feels organic. It feels like a natural fiber. It definitely feels like something that came out of the earth and was spun into yarn. It feels like what it is. And so I'm very partial to unmercerized cotton for that reason. But I also do like a good mercerized cotton when I want something shiny or I want something a little showy. Or if it has been spun up with something like linen or bamboo. Bamboo makes everything shiny. It makes everything silky. And bamboo is also very, very, very drapey. Just know going into it, bamboo makes everything drape beautifully. 100% bamboo really feels like it should just be liquid. <laughs> That's how I feel about bamboo. It's a good thing but you just want to know that going in. But anyway, so that's what mercerized cotton means. It is a process that the yarn itself, the, the, the fiber itself goes through and it does change the properties of cotton somewhat. So that's all I'm going to say about the Lion Brand 24 seven cotton. We've talked about mercerized cotton is let's move on. Cause guys, I still have more yarn. <laughs> I told y'all I was going to tell you, I told you, and now I'm telling you <laughs> like lots of yarn. The next one I want to talk about is also a really, really great budget option. Now you can't get it in stores as far as I'm aware. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But as far as I'm aware, you can't find this in stores because it is Lovecraft's brand. So Lovecraft's is the website, very similar to Webbs. You can get a lot of, a lot of Webbs, Jimmy Bean, you know, Lovecraft's. It's like the trifecta of find your yarn online. And so Paintbox is their brand. And this yarn is ridiculously cheap. And I say that in price, not in what you're getting. So this is the colorway I have. This is their racing colorway. Now returning viewers are probably sick and tired of seeing this, but I did want to show you what it looks like knit up. This, this it was my I am no man prototype and it is completely knit out of paint box cotton. I love it. And again, remember I said that I tend to be partial to non mercerized cotton or unmercerized cotton which I'm not sure. Paintbox did say that this is mercerized. So I would assume that if they don't say it's mercerized, it's unmercerized. It's also not very shiny. So that tells me it's probably unmercerized. But this is what it look like, looks like knit up. Now for a lot of people, you would definitely want to wear an undershirt under this, which personally, I have no problem with that. I would just put on a tank top and call it a day. But it knits up wonderfully. Definitely not buttered kittens. But for $3 a skein, it's fantastic. You will get knots. Again, you're paying $3 a skein. But other than, like, if you don't mind a couple knots for $3, it's an excellent budget option. I would absolutely knit blankets out of this. I would absolutely knit baby stuff out of this. I would knit garments for myself, obviously, out of this yarn. I absolutely love this yarn. And they've got a lot of colors. And they also have, I think they also have an Aran weight that I have not myself knit with, but I absolutely would. This is a DK weight and it is a fantastic budget option. So that is Paintbox, Paintbox Yarns DK weight cotton. You can get it on lovecrafts.com. And if I'm wrong and you can get this in the stores, please somebody tell me. So the second to last yarn that I actually have in front of me that we'll talk about is Galileo from Knit Picks. Now, Guys, I got more knit picks coming. Like, so we're gonna talk about a couple more knit picks yarns. But this is a yarn I have in front of me right now, and I'm having to resist knitting with. Now, this is bamboo and merino. <laughs> it's so silky. It is so silky. It is so soft. I have plans to knit uh, Jacqueline C. Slack's Bandit cardigan out of this. And this is their Meteor colorway. The green, oh God, the green, the green of it all. As you can see, I have a type. <laughs> uh, it's just beautiful. I am so excited to knit with this. Uh, this is a sport weight yarn. Again, returning viewers are people who have been following different, you know, patterns that I'm, I'm designing as we speak. Well, no, I'm a huge fan of sport weight yarns. You, I, I feel like sport weight gives you the drape and the, the lightness of a fingering weight without quite such a Herculean effort to knit with it. And that's why I really love sport weight yarn. This is merino and bamboo. It's so silky, but because it's merino, I would definitely say this is a spring yarn. I don't know that I would wear this in the summer. If I did wear this in the summer, particularly in Florida, I would probably wear it at night, particularly after a day at the beach, you know, when you've soaked up maybe a little too much sun and so everything is cold. <laughs> That's probably when I would wear this in the summer. 
But down here, this would be almost a year round yarn. And it is so silky. I can already tell it's going to drape. <laughs> it's going to drape like a dream. And I'm very excited to knit with this. And in only a way that Knit Picks could do it, Knit Picks and Brita Baby Cat yarn, there's like a thousand colors available in this yarn. It's intense. How many? I think, did I write down? Okay, I didn't write down how many colors, but I'm scrolling through them as you can, as we speak right now. There's a ton of colors in this yarn. So this is Galileo from Knit Picks. Absolutely would suggest if you're looking for a blend that includes merino, but you don't want it to be 100% wool. The last yarn that I have sitting right in front of me, this is probably the most expensive yarn that I'm going to talk about. It is knit, not knit picks. Good God, it's the opposite of knit picks. This is Pearl Soho. This is Pearl Soho's Cattail Silk. I believe it's 100% silk, right? I think so. Fairly certain this is 100% silk. This is their colorway purple sumac. Yeah, 100% silk. This is their purple sumac colorway, which again, clearly, I have a type. <laughs> Which I don't know when purple became that type, but here we all are. So this is their purple sumac colorway. This is 100% cattail silk. It is from Pearl Soho. This is the most expensive yarn that we're going to talk about today. Uh, I think it may push $30. I got this for myself. I had a treat yourself kind of day. And I got this for Kirsten Joel's Rin Can, Rin Con Kaftan. And the beauty of that, that, that pattern is size inclusive. And the beauty of it is that it only took three skeins of this. Let's see, does it say 618 yards? Like you get a lot of yarn in this. So it only takes three to knit the Rincon Kaftan for my size, which I have a 45, a 44 inch natural bust. And I think I'm knitting, oh God, I don't know what size. I'll put it somewhere here, what size I'm knitting. So three skeins. And absolutely worth the money, if you ask me. And this this pattern from Kirsten is so beautiful. I talked about it in my spring and summer knits video. I was just, there was just no way that I wasn't going to get the suggested yarn, get the heirloom yarn, and just do the damn thing. And so that that's where my head was at with, with that pattern. There are some very beautiful colors in this, in this yarn. And this is one where, obviously, this is not plant-based. This is silk. This feels much more like unmercerized cotton than it feels like very uh, slick silk. I think that's why I love it. Uh, I'd very much love the texture to it. And it's fantastic. It might change when you wash it. I don't know. I haven't swatched with it yet. But I'm very excited to do so and very excited to use this yarn. Okay, so those are all the yarns that I have sitting in front of me. Now we're going to talk about a couple of yarns that I don't have sitting in front of me, but I have squished. So I feel comfortable telling you that these are excellent. The first one is Blue Sky Fibers Worsted Organic Cotton. Holy buttered kittens, guys. This is incredible. So there is conventional wisdom says that the best cotton co is either Pima cotton or Egyptian cotton because of the length of the fiber itself. I don't doubt that, but I can tell you I am not concerned about the fact that Blue Sky Fibers is not saying this is Egyptian or Pima Cotton. That's how buttery this was. I squished it at my local yarn store before my favorite local yarn store went out of business. They have a worsted weight. They also have a skinny version. Um, I believe it's, yeah. So their, their organic cotton that I'm talking about is worsted. I don't know what the skinny one is. Uh, I couldn't find it on their website. They, this yarn is so squishable. It is absolutely buttered kittens. They don't necessarily have a huge range of colors in this one, but the colors they do have are very interesting. They are not your typical Easter colors or baby knit colors, and that's why I appreciate it. So that is Blue Sky, uh, Blue Sky Fibers Organic Worsted Cotton. Again, I don't have it in front of me, but I have squished it. It is beautiful. It's a high quality yarn, so it's a big st sticker price, but if you ask me, I think it's worth it. The next one we're going to talk about is the total opposite. Uh, it's not a huge sticker price, but I, I very much enjoyed squishing this yarn. So what had happened was I stress bought myself a bunch of yarn that I did not need and I regretted it. So I returned this yarn, which is why I don't have it in front of me. And the only reason I returned it was because I thought better of the gluttonous yarn buying that I did that I just, I did not need. And so I thought, let's rectify the situation to the best of my ability. And I returned it. So this is Lindy Chain from Knit Picks. It is 
very lightweight. It is incredibly versatile and it is a chain at yarn. So you guys know, I love chain at yarns and it is perfect. It's absolutely perfect for warm weather. It gives you a really crisp stitch definition. That's according to nitpicks, but I do not doubt what they're saying based on what I felt when I was holding this yarn. And it also has a really nice drape. Now I think that this is a hundred percent linen, but I could be wrong. So I'll put here on the screen or you will see it while scrolling, but I'll also put on the screen if this is 100% linen or not. As I'm scrolling through this, you guys can see, as only nitpicks can, nitpicks and Brit of Baby Cat Yarns, there are so many colors. It is mind-blowing how many colors are available in, in a linen yarn. I don't think I've ever seen this many colors available in a plant yarn ever, and it's super exciting. So this is a fingering weight yarn, fairly certain it's 100% linen. Hopefully I'm not repeatedly lying to you, uh, but I have held this, it's chainette. I would absolutely knit something out of this. It's, it's a really great, really, really, really great option. In fact, I'm sitting here thinking about it. And if the gone to seed tea, which I talked about in my summer and spring knits video, if that's a fingering weight, I might, I might use Lindy chain for it. <laughs> anyway, this is the Lindy chain yarn by Knit Picks. I told you guys, I was gonna, <laughs> you guys, a couple people said to me, I don't know anything about spring or summer yarns. And I said, let's fix that. <laughs> so, hey, I know there's a lot happening in this video. I think we are like pushing an hour now. Anyway, these are yarns that I have never squished. I have never touched, but they have been suggested to me by people I know and trust. So the next is Drops, they're, they're saffron. Uh, yarn. Now this is Egyptian cotton. So for Egyptian cotton, I'm very impressed by this price tag. <laughs> and so this is another great budget buy. Again, I have not knit with this in the past, but it was suggested by a member of the thread. And when I went and looked, I was like, holy lovely, like pink palette, Batman, <laughs> which again, it's, they've got a very nice palette. It's not super extensive, but it, it's nothing to be, you know, mad at either. And I do love kind of the browns and the pink tones and that very light and, and springy kind of feel. It feels light and springy without feeling like an Easter card. So this is 100% Egyptian cotton, like I said, and the colorways are definitely interesting. So this is on my list to give a try, but I have not knit with it before. So that is Drops Saffron. I think it's a fingering weight. Uh, I did not write that down. So I will double check and put on the screen, but again, I'm scrolling through it. So I'm sure you will see what weight it is, but this is Drops saffron. The last one we're going to talk about, I'm just going to talk about the company as a whole. And as we, as we talk about it, I'll go through a couple like scrolling, as you can see, we'll scroll through some of their bases. We'll scroll through some of their colorways because they have so many options and I've never knit with it before, but it has been on my list for the longest time. It is terrapin fibers. We're going to end on a high note guys. A lot of people that I know and a lot of people I respect have suggested this yarn. They have designed with this yarn and they say it's a really great option for plant yarns, particularly in the summer. So the one that I'm most excited to try is their Deer Creek Organic Cotton Linen. Like I said about the Kotlin with Knit Picks, I am a sucker for a cotton linen blend. I'm an absolute sucker for it. So they, ha they say, according to their website, Deer Creek comes closest to that classic linen feel. So it may feel a little stiff and it may feel a little sturdy, but here's the thing about linen, guys. The more you handle it, the softer it gets. The more you wash it, the softer it gets. The more you wear it, the softer it gets. So it just gets like a fine wine. It gets better with age. And that's something I really, really love about linen. It does wrinkle relatively easily, but linen can be thrown in the dryer and it's very easy to unwrinkle it. I am also personally not fussy about wrinkles. I'm just not. And so I'm very excited to, to work with some linen, sew with some linen when I can get over my sewing fear. But anyway, back to Terrapin Fibers. I'm very, very jazzed to give this Deer Creek uh, a, a shot. Because it has such a high linen content, it is one of their most environmentally sustainable fibers. So that's the other great thing about a cotton linen blend. You're getting the best of both worlds and it has a, a, a less environmental footprint. So they also have some relatively moody colorways. So I'm scrolling through some of those, as you can see, and I'm very, very excited. I'm just super excited to give Terrapin Fibers a shot. Their Deer Creek is the one that I'm most interested in at the moment, but all of their bases sound fantastic. 
I just, I love it. I love a variety of bases. I love a variety of blends. And I definitely think Terrapin Fibers hits every single one of those notes. So, holy, like, almost hour-long podcast, Batman. Yeah, I'm drinking iced coffee out of my Beach Life Pensacola Beach mug. Don't judge me. <laughs> Don't judge me. I'm using it in the house right now because it is the only size cup that I have that will hold the amount of coffee that will satiate my need for coffee right now. So tell me. Do you have some ideas now? <laughs> I don't want you guys to feel like I'm trying to pressure you guys into buying these yarns. I'm not. I'm not trying to influence you to, you know, consume what you don't need to consume. This is for people who are on the hunt. This is for people who want to learn. This is for the people who have always wanted to use a plant-based option but don't really know where to start. That's what this is for. So I hope no one feels like I'm like, buy the yarn. Buy the yarn. Like, I'm, I'm really not. If you want to, do it. But like, don't feel like, you know, you're trying, I'm trying to influence you to do so. I'm really not. But tell me, does it give you any ideas? Are there any of these yarns that you're super jazzed to give, you know, a try? Just let, let me know what you think. What, what did I miss? What plant-based yarns or summer blends? It, I mean, it could include wool. It could include silk. Tell me, tell me in the comments. I would love to hear it. And on that note, I'm going to say bye because my, I mean, guys, I could talk forever, but maybe not. <laughs> this was a marathon. And if you made it to the end, <laughs> you are a ride or die. <laughs> that is what I'm going to say about you. If you made it to the end of this video, I was so glad that you did. And I'm so glad that you chose to spend your time with me next week. We will be talking about my, I am no man sweater, which I definitely got past row 70. Woo! <laughs> past row 70 and we're gonna talk about it so i'm very much looking forward to seeing you then and i hope you have a really great weekend i hope you're having a great weekend and i hope you continue to have a great weekend and i look very much forward to hearing all of your ideas and any of your you know the yarns that i missed in the comments and i will talk to y'all next week see ya <laughs>